Hello, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz, and today we're going to be taking a look at X Tropical Cyclone Link. And the forecast is becoming very clear now that Western Australia can expect a Category 3 strength severe tropical cyclone to make a landfall somewhere between Coral Bay and Caratha. The details uh, will be outlined in this forecast update, so make sure you stick around to the end. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for access to future updates, and also leave a like on the video uh, while you're at it. So, taking a look at the system right now, the center of the low located over Halls Creek in Western Australia. It's a little bit further towards the east from what we were expecting. As you can see with the cloud top temperatures here, we've got some pretty significant thunderstorm activity firing up over the center. This means how cold the cloud tops are, and obviously the colder the cloud tops, the stronger the thunderstorms are. You can see a lot of lightning activity also extending out around the storm and the adjacent thunderstorms to it. We'll take a look at the weather radar real quick and see what's going on around this system as well in terms of rainfall. You can see uh, a lot of consistent Consistent moderate to heavy rainfall located around the center of the system. It's not a big widespread swath of rainfall, but it's still quite a um a uh, nice little bulge of moderate to heavy rainfall that's situated over the top of Halls Creek right now, which are currently receiving winds of 26 kilometers an hour. Nothing awfully strong, certainly nothing close to cyclone status, but it does look like this system's gonna get stronger as it heads towards Fitzroy Crossing and then across to, I would say, Derby over here um, and north of, in the northern regions of Western Australia. You will also notice that there's not too much lightning around the center of the circulation. Now, um, that is pretty typical in tropical lows. Tropical activity generally really doesn't have too much lightning. It's only the really strong cyclones that have lightning around them. So again, it's behaving very much like a tropical low right now, not an organized bunch of thunderstorms, which I guess is good news for the system because as soon as it gets itself over waters, it will be able to rapidly intensify and make the most of the primed conditions of tropical cyclone intensification that are in the West Australian waters. It has a very bright future ahead of it. And if we take a look at the wind forecast, we'll start things off with the Eastern BF to, uh, forecast and then we'll We'll look at other forecasts to get a good idea of the picture. You can see uh, initialize the system's location quite well just towards the northeast of Halls Creek. It will move through Western Australia, but it's going to take its merry time. It takes it till about Wednesday evening to get itself properly offshore. In fact, it might even be Thursday morning until it can get itself properly offshore. Uh, yeah, Thursday 5 a.m. local time looks like it uh, starts its rapid intensification, gets up towards cyclone status by Thursday lunchtime, and then it looks like it's already at severe tropical cyclone status by Friday morning by the looks of things with wind gusts probably approaching 100 kilometers an hour or 150 kilometers an hour at this point yeah it's getting quite strong by Friday morning and the eastern cliff is remaining rock solid on their track forecast into Exmouth and Onslow uh, compared to other forecast models which are sort of around Caratha and Port Hedland this does throw us a curveball in the sense of where we want to call the landfall location I'm still very uncertain with where exactly the storm is going to be making landfall but it is now time for uh, people between Coral Bay and Port Hanlon to be preparing for a cyclone impact and especially between Exmouth and Caratha be preparing for a severe tropical cyclone impact. I'm going to outline specifics later on in this video and we're just going to get through the forecast first. It continues rapidly intensification until landfall early Friday morning, uh, Saturday morning local time with peak wind gusts approaching 175 kilometers an hour. You've got a very destructive core around this tropical cyclone. It's going to be moving quite quick. It looks like it's pulling out of Exmouth by about 11 a.m. and cyclone conditions ease out of Exmouth by around uh, Saturday night. But yeah, definitely from Friday evening uh, into Saturday evening, expect full-blown cyclone conditions in Exmouth if this forecast is to reciprocate. The Eastern Blue also rock solid on an intensity around 970 millibars or so. Now that is equating to probably a low end category three strength severe tropical cyclone. So I would definitely be preparing now as if a category three strength severe tropical cyclone is gonna come ashore on Exmouth. Uh, category three is definitely the worst case scenario at this time, things can change. Maybe tomorrow we wake up and we see um, a bigger forecast or something like that. But right now, expect a peak intensity of category three status. So you should be preparing for a category three strength severe tropical cyclone. For most new homes between Exmouth and Caratha, or north of Coral Bay, basically. Uh, they are built to withstand Category 3 strength severe tropical cyclones, but once again, your deck furniture, your trampoline, that's definitely not withstand, uh, not built to withstand Category 3 strength severe tropical cyclone winds, and those stuff will be tossed around like toys um, if you leave them out. So again, I'll outline specific details later on in the video. We're going to contrast this forecast now to the Icon forecast model, which is another relatively reliable one, but it has called for a substantially weaker system today. 
and I want to know why that is. It looks like it calls for a very messy and disorganised system to re-emerge off the West Australian coastline, which means it will take its merry time to organise again. Now, that's interesting because initialising the forecast, the Icon model actually has a pretty sound-looking system. So maybe the more mountainous, well, not mountainous, but hilly terrain here in the Kimberley region might have a part to play in destroying the tropical cyclone structure as it moves over Western Australia, which is possible. But again, I'm not really seeing that as a possibility considering other forecast models don't reciprocate that in their forecasts. And I think the Icon model taking it, well, what, 12 hours to intensify into a tropical cyclone over West Australian waters, which are primed for intensification, uh, that might be a little bit on the softer side. I don't reckon that that's going to happen. But again, these storms, they can take their time to intensify. They can take their time to really get themselves together. Uh, so yeah, we'll be watching this quite closely. And if it does take 12 or 16 hours to intensify, once it gets offshore around Broome, then uh, we're really looking at it for a much weaker system making landfall on the West Australian coastline. Certainly the best case scenario that is. You can see making landfall on Karatha is a, probably a category one strength system here. Still, it would be advisable to prepare for a category three strength severe tropical cyclone. It looks like it's gonna be one of those systems last minute that decides where it's gonna be making landfall a track forecast where it comes in sort of diagonally to the West Australian coastline and almost parallels it. That, that gives us a really difficult um, forecast in terms of where to pick a landfall site because a wobble 50 kilometres to the east or the west could bring the storm 100 or 150 kilometres um, up the coast or down the coast. So it's going to be a very difficult landfall forecast. Right now I'm leaning on locations between Onslow and Karatha because it's a blend of the major forecast models. But again, uh, with the GFS keeping the system well out to sea, it does look like Exmouth might actually be the likely scenario at this point. Um, the GFS model actually not calling for anything in terms of a, of a strong tropical cyclone and I think that's because it re-emerges offshore as a very disorganised system. So tomorrow is going to be crucial for this system. It needs to keep itself um, uh, wrapped up and in intensifying basically right up towards its re-emerge off the coastline um, and if it doesn't do that then it's going to really struggle to get itself together by the looks of things. So it's going to be a very interesting day tomorrow in terms of what the system does and there will be a twice daily update tomorrow. Uh, hopefully I need to check my calendar and make sure that I'm not working or anything. Um, but yeah, I really want to cover this system quite closely. Now the Access G3 model has for the storm's lifetime, being the strongest. It's been on the upper echelon of what this tropical cyclone is gonna do intensity-wise, and it's reciprocated in this forecast as well. You can see as we get to Thursday and it re-emerges offshore, it remains fairly strong. It's definitely a fully-fledged tropical cyclone straight away, and then by Thursday evening, it's already rapidly intensifying and approaching severe tropical cyclone status by Friday morning. So a similar forecast to the Eastern BF. The only key difference here in terms of intensity and also, um, I guess, uh, track is where the system is going to be making landfall. Uh, the difference here is that it makes landfall right on top of Karatha, a very similar location to the Icon model, which makes me even more confident in calling Karatha as a landfall site right now. But with a pressure of 964 millibars, you're looking out for a severe tropical cyclone here and on the high end of Category 3 status with peak wind gusts approaching 205 kilometers an hour. So 200 kilometer an hour winds expected to blow through Karatha and Roeburn and associated areas adjacent areas rather and panel wants here i guess um very very strong system indeed if this was to make landfall it'd be the strongest um, on Karatha for quite a number of years. Now, I'm not totally sold on this landfall scenario yet, especially at this intensity. The Access G3 model has been on the upper end of, the of intensity for the entirety of the storm's life. Um, so once again, the Access G3 being a convective model, it doesn't do the best job in terms of tropical cyclone intensities, but it was pretty good with track as it made landfall in the Gulf of Carpentaria. And considering the Access has been coming more on board with the ECMBF model as well, I'm more certain between on on Karatha to call a landfall and obviously that would bring the absolute worst conditions ashore over Karatha with peak wind gusts of 200 kilometers an hour. Now if we were to compare that to the eastern we have forecast they're still about oh, 150 kilometers away from each other and it's still a pretty big deal because if it makes landfall over like Karatha or Roba then Exmouth probably won't even receive cyclone winds and vice versa 
So it, it is a big deal in terms of where I call a landfall site at this point. Now, the Bureau of Meteorology, I fear, are not going to be receiving uh, releasing details on this system until about 24 hours before landfall because it's going to be one of those systems that basically more or less comes out of the blue. So the Bureau of Meteorology might not be your best source of information here. The news um, sites such as the ABC, they generally have pretty good advice on how to prepare for these systems, but sometimes they talk up these storms as well. Um, but now I'll tell you how to prepare for this system. Category 3 strength severe tropical cyclone. It's a strong one. It's nothing to laugh at. Uh, you'll need to have fuel for a generator because there is a chance that you'll lose power for 24 to 48 hours. That will power your esky, that will power your fans, that might even be able to hook up to your, um, I guess, uh, house power if you've got a powerful enough generator. You'll need bottled water, uh, certainly enough for a lot of pe uh, for people. Uh, I think it's five liters a day for five days uh, for um, uh, per person. So if you're talking for a family of five, you're going to need about 625 liters of water. I believe that's how the math works out. Correct me if I'm wrong. You'll need canned food, non-perishable food as well uh, that you can store in a cupboard and it won't go bad in a tropical cyclone. Certainly a fan as well. I mean, uh, I'm talking down in Perth right now where the weather has been completely horrible for the past couple of days, but a fan to keep yourself cool in these humid tropical cyclones is great advice. You'll also find great how to prepare information at your Shire office. You can go online and find it. There's a lot of Facebook groups as well that will help you out here. And if you've got any specific questions, then please do leave them in the comments section down below. I'll try and get back to them. Um, but yeah, it does look like it's gonna be a strong system. Oh, I forgot, you need the esky full of beers as well to get yourself through a system like this. Don't get too pissed though, it is a tropical cyclone, remember. Uh, but yeah, strong system, that's all I I can say at this point. Um, we're still a little bit unsure in terms of specifics for a landfall, of course, because it's not going to be coming straight into the coastline. It's going to be coming sort of more parallel or diagonal to the coastline, which means any wobble in the track is going to mean a big deal in terms of where this system comes ashore. But yeah, if you do live between Coral Bay and Port Hedland, it is now time to expect a severe tropical cyclone and probably time to start preparing, especially around Onslow, Caratha, and maybe even Exmouth as well, where a landfall is more likely than not and where the worst conditions will likely occur. Um, I would certainly be starting to prepare for a severe tropical cyclone. We're going to take a look at rainfall as well around this system because it's going to be moving quite fast. It doesn't look like it's going to dump a tremendous amount of rainfall, but over the next 10 days, though, still could expect up to 150 to 200 millimetres around the landfall site. And as with every tropical cyclone, flash flooding can be expected. The access due through model calling for slightly more rainfall, that's probably because they've got a slightly stronger system, but up to 250 millimetres around Caratha and inland to Panawansi as well. And it looks like the rainfall um last as well as far inland as some of these mining communities, maybe even Mika Farah as well, and could soak some of these inland areas and deliver them some much needed rainfall. I'm absolutely hoping that this uh, spikes a thunderstorm event around Perth and Jury and Man towards Geraldton as well, because we need some rainfall really badly. I think today's going to be a little bit cooler in Perth. This tremendous heat wave that the Bureau of Meteorology forecast, it didn't really materialise, but it was still blisteringly hot uh, and quite uncomfortable as well, but I don't think it was as bad as initially forecast, which is good, and the weather will finally start to cool down for Perth residents uh, from tomorrow. So yeah, that basically does it on this cyclone right now. A bit of a quicker update today uh, under a bit of time pressure with a uh, shift at work um, upcoming. Uh, quite a strong system expected. I've said that a couple of times now, but yeah, it's certainly not a system to be playing around with. If you've got any further questions, leave them in the comment section down below. Um, contact your Shire office or get yourself on a Facebook group to assist with tropical cyclone preparations. The communities up here are normally really good at helping each other up, especially the more remote ones where they actually have to rely on each other uh, to get themselves ready for these tropical cyclones. But yeah, Exmouth, Caratha, Roeburn, Onslow, Port Hedland, these are big communities to be impacted by a tropical cyclone and it doesn't happen every single year. So make sure you are watching the forecast closely, keep it on top of the Bureau of Meteorology, your news companies, your Shire office, and also this channel as well. There's no better way to do that than by subscribing. But anyways, that is all for me. I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.